live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. Sal Bellis is in the house. Of course, we are celebrating his Netflix hit Black Summer streaming. Now, congratulations, Sal. Thank you. Thank you. It's scary. Really scary. I know. <laughs> the, world, the, the world is infatuated with, with zombies trying to kill you and or is trying to save your life and being heroes. I mean, you look at Black Summer, you look at Game of Thrones, the world mm -hmm. loves it. I don't know why. But it's happening. Yeah. People right? yeah. are obsessed with the zombie apocalypse. What was your experience like getting to actually like walk, walk in those shoes? Oh man, I, I, uh, it's it's, you know, taking on a, a new story to tell is a beautiful thing, and then you find yourself indulged in this character. So uh, William is the character's name, and um, he was just like trying to get back to his children and trying trying to do the right thing but it was a wrong time, you know what I mean? So when you're dealing with the dead coming to life, you know, and you're dealing with strangers, you have to save, you know, it's an apocalyptic time. You're, you find yourself like questioning what's real and what's not all the time. So that was what it was like. Wow, you know? yeah. well, we'd love to take a look at the trailer. Sure. Black Summer on Netflix. So, so tell us, as an actor, you have to embody and, and get into that perception and, and what is like. What is that like to be in the middle of that consciously? Um, you know, you, you find yourself, you, to me, um, you, you take everything that's been going on in your life, right? And so you get a script that's thrown in front of you and the story that's in front of you is, is another writer's words, but truly it is your life. Mm -hmm. So how vulnerable can you be, right? How willing, how, how, how much of yourself are you willing to expose? Mm -hmm. So if you go back to all our great performances or our great actors in our lifetime that we've fell, fell in love with, um, we've always watched people convey themselves and, and be vulnerable. And that's what we want to see. We don't want to see the normal. We want to see everything exposed. And so when you do a character like this, there was nothing left in his tank. I mean, he walked to the very, very final end of it. You know, his, like, everything he had in him to defend anybody he loved, he, he did it. So uh, were you tired after? <laughs> <laughs> Exhausted. <laughs> Every day. All right, so here's the, here's the funny. I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not big into wine, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but every day I'd find myself, my producers would say, um, Sal, <laughs> I'm like, I'm so bruised and beaten, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, 14-hour uh, days, Monday through Friday, for three months in Canada, right? Wow. And so at the end of the day, I'd find myself grabbing a glass of wine <laughs> and sitting in a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Like, to be me. <laughs> With a robe that never fit. And I'd walk around in slippers in a hotel. And I'd lock my door to my room. And I'd be like, nobody's coming in. Right? And uh, I'd enjoy a glass of Merlot or whatever it is. Yeah, one of the artists go crazy, right? They yeah, go. bubble bath. It works. <laughs> you know, Stephen King has even been tweeting about yes. this series. Yeah, could you imagine? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. The series has taken on a whole life of its own. And when you get the guy like Stephen King, who is, you know, a horror god, you know, he- Living legend. He, yes, mm -hmm. he is, he is an icon. And he's like, uh, the, the who set the footprints for writing these kind of uh, stories. 
And uh, yeah, he, he loves it. So thank you, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to working with you too. I can quote, it, Black Summer is an existential hell of a zombie show. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely, you know, it's so weird. You know, my, my director, John Himes, was so giving to me. Um, you can only wish to get a uh, director or a crew that's so giving. And um, he allowed me to explore everything I can do with that character. And um, without that, you know, you wouldn't see the, all this, you know, because we're so used to backstories. We're used to, used to everything being explained to us when we watch a, a film or a TV show. Um, and this one, you're just, you're dropped right in the heart of it. Yeah. How'd you discover you wanted to be an actor? Ah, good question. Hmm. No, uh, uh, <laughs> I, was a kid. I was a kid. I was like a little kid and I, and I knew I could entertain. I, I would sing, I would dance. I would, I would, I would make people laugh. I used to recite Richard Pryor, you know, I used to memorize everything I could think of. And I was really just doing it for an extra plate of food because I had a big family in Chicago, you know what I mean? And so we're Puerto Ricans, so everywhere we go, it'd be like, everybody would be like, oh, you know, is there a second plate? And I'm like, I got that second plate. I'm going to sing and dance. And that's how I, that's it all happening. And then later on, I um, ended up becoming part of Second City in Chicago. They were, uh, it was a change my whole life. They gave me a uh, scholarship and asked me to join their touring company. Aww. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. I mean, Second City in Chicago burst some of the most talented and successful comedians and entertainers in the entire world. Yes. Um, unbelievable. I, I am. I'm, I'm honored. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're talking about from the Belushis to, uh, you know, every, the whole cast of SNL, you know, go all the way back to Alan Arkin, Joan mm -hmm. Rivers, everybody, Peter Boyle, everybody's been through Second City. And uh, the list continues. So now you have your, your Rachel, Drash, Tina Fey, all those guys. But let me ask you a very personal question, Sal. What do you think it is about you that Second City recognized and they said, you know what, we're going to scholarship him. We're going to sponsor him. Mm. Um, I think they Dash saw... good looks, man. Dash good looks. <laughs> you see, good looks. Maybe I had the old spice. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'll be honest. I thought that um, I really didn't know what I was doing, to be honest. I, I just knew how to entertain people and make people laugh. But they recognize that star quality. Yeah, I remember going to my director and saying, what are we doing? And she says, just keep doing it until we tell you to stop. And I was like, fair enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Do you remember the first big break you got? Um, I think, yeah, I was working with Kelsey Grammer on... And on a show called, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Kelsey it's Garrett's really allowed. Yeah. That speaks Grammar. for itself oh, right there. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a Chicago show. I can't even think of the yeah. darn yeah. show. Boss. Yes. Kelsey Grammer played the mayor of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it was on uh, Stars Network. And um, and I remember sitting there with Gus Van Zandt, right? <laughs> and, wow. and he goes, and he was mad at me most. Not because of my performance or anything, but because I, w I had to trim my beard. <laughs> and he goes, Sal, I said, I said, oh, what do you want me to do? He goes, he goes, it's not that. He says, you could do whatever you want on set. I don't care, just do whatever you want on the camera, but don't trim your beard so much. <laughs> because I had a wedding to go to that weekend, and I, and I remember I trimmed it too, a little too much. But other than that, um, I think that was the first time when I said, well, I think Gus Van Sant and I are just friends, you know? <laughs> and then from there, Oliver Stone and I worked together, and, and you go from there, and you start to recognize that people really, you know, when John Travolta comes up to you and gives you a hug and says, I love it, you know, and mm -hmm. then I have Blake Lively's parents chasing me around on set one day, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know and then I was like, hey, you're Blake's parents, you know, right. and um, this acting thing might work out. Right. <laughs> so yeah. so right. what, what advice would you give somebody that's out there, they've got some talent, what would you say? Um, well, I would say stay true to whatever it is you believe in. Um, if you're a singer, if you're a writer, if you're a... Uh, um, an actor, whatever, whatever it is that you're choosing to do, stay true to it um, and don't try and cheat. There's a lot of shortcuts that everybody wants to take, but at the end of the day, we're all telling stories and you want to be the best storyteller you can be. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you so yeah. much. For thank you. The mini laughs and the <laughs> thank share. You. Black Summer is streaming now on Netflix. Sal, so please remind everyone where they can find and follow your journey as well. Me? Um, bu 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 Sal Velez Jr. on Instagram. I think that's where we kind of co correspond for the most part. Other than that, I'd see you on TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be back with more on Good Morning La La Land.